Peace and blessings, peace and blessings, family. It's Martha Messenger. We're back in our video. This one's going to be about how to discern between God's voice and Satan's voice. For those who are new to the faith, you might not know where the voices are coming from. Um, maybe those who are battling demonic strongholds that are, you know, trying to fast and pray it off, or maybe demonic spirits. And best believe when you try to get those demonic strongholds and spirits off of you, uh, Satan's going to try to whisper, he, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to be telling what he what he's going to be doing. So we must be wise as a serpent and to be harmless as a dove. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Okay, let's go. Let's go. This is God's voice. Well, the thing about God is that he will keep you still. Okay. He, he doesn't want you to be in a rush. He doesn't want you to be in a hurry. But Satan, when he's whispering in your ear, in your ear, okay, he keeps you in a rush. And one thing I noticed about through my testimony about whenever I was in a rush, it made me think illogically. It made me do things that I didn't, I didn't question. You know, I was just in a rush, you know, get into it. It led to a lot of uh, problems. If I were to listen to God's voice and just be still and be patient and operate in the fruits of the spirit, it would have saved me a whole lot of problems. Okay. So best believe if you're hearing that voice to rush, be in a hurry, that's not God. Okay. And I have a verse to go over. This is in Psalms chapter 46, verse 10. It says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I'll be exalted in the earth. So even God says his word. And this is another, another way, guys, when it comes to spiritual warfare, when it comes to battling certain, you know, certain demonic spirits or strongholds, you want to fight back with the word of God because that's how Christ defeated the devil. When the devil came to tempt him, when the devil said, I lied to his ear, you know, tell him certain things. You know, if you fall, if you jump off the cliff, you won't die. You know, things like that. He fought back with the word of God. So that's why it's so important to study to show yourself approved, to read the Bible for yourself. So, you know, when, when these voices are coming, you know, you know how to fight back. Because everything that backs up with God's voice, I have a scripture towards everything. So when Satan's giving you these lies, you fight back with the word of God. Everyone to have a scripture. Okay. So, yes. The first thing is that God keeps you still. He doesn't want you in a rush, but Satan does. Satan wants you in a rush. He wants you in a hurry. The okay, next one up is that God encourages you, okay? He wants to see you prosper. You know, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse uh, 11 says that, you know, God wants to see you prosper. He gives you an unexpected end. Okay, but Satan, Satan discourages you. And how does he do that? By pushing fear. He pushes fear that, you know, you're not going to make it. Uh, and this is a verse I want to give you guys. This is in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says that, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of sound mind. Okay? So when you have uh, the spirit of sound mind, having the sound mind, you're going to understand all these things. You're also going to understand all these things, that these are not coming from God. You're going to have wisdom. Okay? And you're going to have power and love. You're going to understand and be able to discern God's voice and Satan's voice. So remember, God encourages you. You know, and, and Satan, he's going to discourage you. He's going to make you feel like you're not worthy for salvation. He's going to make you feel like you're just not worthy in general. Okay, so you got to be able to discern and don't fall into the devil's lies. Okay, next one up is God strengthens you. Okay, God strengthens you. And let's say if you're in a weak point in life, even the Bible says that when you're weak, you're actually strong. So this is why it's important to know the Bible, because there was times where I felt like I was weak. And I thought, you know, Satan got the best of me, but the Bible actually says that when you're weak, you're actually strong. Okay. So, uh, you know, God strengthens you and Satan's, and Satan weakens you. Okay. So let's read this. This is in Psalms uh, 31 verse 24. It says, be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. Okay. There's also another one. It says one John chapter four, verse 18. It says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear because fear have torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Wow, that's deep. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Okay, so what God, God will strengthen you. Okay, and you know, what saying does, he weakens you. This is also a good verse too. Okay, this is in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. This is that. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? So not only does Satan want to weaken you, he's weakening this entire nation. This whole nation, as you know it, what's, what's going on in these modern societies that everyone is, you know, departing from Christian values, from the faith, and everyone's operating. Y'all see what's going on in the world. This is all the devil doing it, okay? The Bible even says that the earth belongs to the wicked in the, in the book of Job, okay? The earth belongs to the wicked, and Satan is weakening the nations. He's weakening the men. And that's what he's doing. He's weakening the nation. So always keep in mind, you don't want to, you want to be set apart. You don't want to be the one that's being deceived because Satan deceives the entire earth in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Okay, so strength, God will strengthen you and Satan weakens you. Okay, next one up is convicts you. So God convicts you. Yes, God does convict you. When you're in sin, you're, when you're in error, 
He will convict you. That is in love. Because if you live a certain lifestyle without repentance, now I know no one's going to be without sin. That's why he's going to convict you. Maybe you're doing a sin that you have no idea. Maybe that the church you're going to, the pastors that you're watching on YouTube, they're not really talking about certain sins. Or, you know, maybe the church you're going to, he's not. they're not giving you sound doctrine. They're not convicting you. So God will do it. You know, because God loves us so much, he will convict you. Now it's up to you to take heed to the convictions. up to you to repent. And to do better. Now, you know, faith, that's why you have that faith. Faith, faith through that works is death. Okay, so God will convict you and Satan will condemn you. The difference between the conviction is condemn is condemn. There's, there's no, you're done, you know, but God will convict you and he'll give you grace. He'll give you mercy. He'll be patient with you. Okay, but if you continue living a certain lifestyle without repentance, the Bible does say there is a judgment for those who live a life without repentance. Okay, even Jesus says repent or, or perish. Okay, so next one up. Or sorry, let me read this verse real quick. Yeah, let me read this verse. This is in John chapter 16, verse 7 to 8. It says, Nevertheless, I tell you truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I not go away, the comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Okay, and when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Okay, so this is the Holy Spirit that God gives us. And the Holy Spirit convicts us. When you're being convicted of your sins, that is a good thing. That means the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Because there's people who could live... Like Satan himself, and they don't feel no conviction. They just feel so comfortable, and Satan has them deceived, okay? They're on their way to the lake of fire unless they repent, okay? So when you're being convicted of a sin, don't be sad. And you see your other friends, they're not being convicted, but you are. You're, you're, you should be happy. You should rejoice. And now you should also apply that conviction and do the best you can to repent, whether it's, you know, you repenting, whether it is you forgiving, uh, not only the other people around you, but yourself. Uh, you know, you know, fasting and praying, doing things to build your spirit up to, you know, to strengthen your spirit, because that's how you fight against sin is by strengthening your spirit. OK, so convicts you, Satan condemns you. Okay, next one up is comforts you. OK, God comforts you and Satan wars you. OK, the anxiety, a lot of this, the anxiety, the guys, is linked to demonic strongholds. When you're feeling anxiety, when you're overthinking. And whenever you're going through this, you want to start reading your Bible more. Maybe if you already know your Bible, you start meditating on the Bible, meditating on the word. You can meditate on these scriptures. You can say this video to your playlist and watch it over time. Or maybe you could just note it on your phone, note these Bible verses in your phone. And whenever you're going through something like this, you could just have these verses and meditate on these verses. Uh, Psalms 46 verse 10, Psalms 31 verse 24, Okay, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7, which I'm going to read right now. This is uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. So God comforts you. He cares for you. Saying he words you. Saying doesn't care about you. Okay, He knows where he's going. And you you being a child of God, you know where you're going. And, and we know that there is a war going on, a spiritual war. Saying does not want you to receive salvation. Because he wants you to go where he's going. Because misery loves company. So he wants you to go to the lake of fire. But you know that's why he's going to worry you and stress you out. Okay, but God's going to come for you. That's why it's so important to know the Bible, to know it. Okay, next one up is God instills hope. Okay, and Satan causes despair. Okay, this is in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. It says that, and now abide in faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of all these is charity, okay, which is another form of love. Okay, so God wants you to have hope. Okay, he wants you to have hope, faith, and, and love. Okay, but Satan... He wants you to cause the opposite. What's the, what's the opposite of hope? Okay, despair. What's the opposite of charity? Hate, envy, jealousy. And what's the opposite of faith? You know, being an unbeliever. So Satan wants you to operate like that, but God wants you to operate in hope, faith, and love, man. So always keep that in mind. And once again, for like the third time saying this video, please meditate on God's word. Meditate whenever you're going through it. Because I remember when I was a babe in the faith, best believe this, this was attacking me hard. I didn't know the Bible. You know, I wish I would have seen a video like this. So hopefully this video can help you guys out. So next one up is God will give you peace. Let me put the light up closer. So God will give you peace and Satan gives you stress. Okay, this is in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. It says, but that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Okay, so God will keep you in perfect peace. Because your mind is stayed on them, so you're meditating on the Bible. Remember, the Bible says, blessed is the man who meditates on God's laws day, day, day and night. Okay, so when you're doing that, God will give you, uh, will keep you in perfect peace. And when you fully put your trust in the Lord, we know what the Bible says over and over again, blessed is the man whose trust is in the Lord. So 
God will give you peace, okay? Your mind has stayed on him. No matter what, no matter what you're going through, no matter if you're if you're backsliding, no matter no matter what's the case may be, because you're fighting, you're fighting. You don't want to be a backslide. You don't want to stay in sin. You're fighting, and we all fall short of the glory of God, and you're not making excuses. You're doing the best you can to to be, to get on that salvation path, a narrow path. So, and you know that you got to keep your mind stayed on him, and you got to be obedient, okay? So when you do that, and you're fighting, and God sees that, He's going to give you an extra form of grace, okay? He's going, to, he's going to give you an extra form of grace, and he's also going to give you peace. And Satan, you know, when you stay on his side, the broad, wide path that the Bible talks about, you're going to be dealing with all this, all of it, okay? He's going to give you, Satan's going to give you stress, okay? So always keep that in mind. Next one up is clarifies. God will clarify you, okay? He will, he will let you know. And the Bible says that Satan is the author of confusion. Okay, God is not the author of confusion, Satan is. So let's read that verse for you guys. That's in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. It says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as says the church of the saints. Okay, also in uh, John chapter 16, verse 13, it says, How about when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, he will show you the things to come. Okay, so the Holy Spirit will show you the things to come. And it's going to clarify you. You won't be led to confusion when you have the Holy Spirit. Never. Okay. And any, if anything that's confusing, people come in your way, uh, that's causing confusion in your life. That's the devil. That's the, that's the, remember, we all, we're not dealing with people. We're dealing with spirit, spirit working through people. Okay. So always keep that in mind. Also, the next one is in Revelation chapter 12, verse nine, it says that, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and saying, which deceived them to the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Okay, so Satan deceives the entire earth. So the only people who can't be deceived by Satan no more, because we were all once deceived by Satan. But once we have the Holy Spirit, once we're walking in the spirit of the truth, we can no longer be deceived. Okay, so always keep that in mind. Next one up is forgives. God forgives you. Okay, remember the Bible says forgive so God can forgive you too. Now, if you're not forgiving your enemies, you're not forgiving those who hurt you, God won't forgive you. Okay, so always keep that in mind. No matter what people did to you, I know it might be hard. Trust me, I get it. But if you want God to forgive you for your sins, we all sin, we all fall short. So we must forgive other people who sins against us. So yes, God will forgive you, but you must forgive other people too. And I'm gonna go over that verse in a little bit. And Satan accuses you, okay? God forgives and Satan accuses, okay? So this is in uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 25. It says, and when you stand praying, forgive for if you have any uh, against that your father also in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses, okay? So when people sin against you, you got to forgive them so God can forgive you of your sins, okay? And also, you know, so when it says that, the Bible says that Satan is a false accuser, accuser of the brethren, okay? So God forgives and Satan accuses, okay? Next one up is God leads and is patient, okay? And Satan pushes you, which kind of goes in hand with keeps you in a rush. So this is in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. It says, but they that weigh upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Okay, so God will lead you, and, he, and he, you know He keeps you patient. Because remember, patient is the fruit of the spirit, and Satan is going to push you. Like I said, when when you're in a rush, you're not thinking logically. So you know, Satan can get the best of you when you do that. So always be patient and always wait on God. And like that verse says, you know, they that wear the, upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Okay. So always keep that in mind. This is, this is God's voice and Satan's voice. So always discern between the two. If you guys made this far, you guys enjoyed the content, you guys got edified from it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you wish. And if you have any, anything more you can add on to it, make sure to leave it in the comments below. I love you guys so much. I hope you guys have a blessed day. I'm out. Peace.